Here we are at the beginning of the boat building process. And of course, for a rigid inflatable boat, you need uh, the inflatable part. So it looks like you've got some uh, fabrics to work with to get that done. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Sure, Paul. Well, we're, as you said, in one of the first stages of the construction of the boat. We're in the inflatable part of the rib construction process. Yep. Yep. So what we need to do is build the tube. And that we're yes. in our tubing facility of our production plant right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And you, you refer to the material we make the tube out of as fabric, yes. which is uh, great. But many people, actually, the misconception is that they call a rib a rubber boat. Yes. You know, they think it's an inflatable, so they just assume it's rubber. But right. when in, in actuality, we actually make it out of a material called hypalon or a fabric material. Okay. And it's a fabric. We actually have a uh, graphic right here yep. that shows that it's actually a multi layered piece made up of a hypalon on the outside with woven materials on the inside and mm. neoprene okay. on the underside, which yep. makes it airtight for you know holding air. Oh. And you can mm. see with the sample right here, it yep. looks like just a piece of fabric like anything. You know, you'd see yep. a, a roll of cloth fabric. Right. It's right. got a rubber component to it. But as you can see, you cannot rip it. Wow. Uh, and that's, again, one of the reasons why we use this on an inflatable boat, because of its strength and tensile. That's very interesting. So it's not, you can't just see it as a single piece of rubber. It's actually a fabric with multi-layers to right. it. Right. If it was just rubber, what you'd have happen is the sun would beat on it, and the, the whole material would fall apart over time. Uh, never thought about so, that. So no. And rubber, you know, great for air holding ability, but it's not puncture resistant. Oh, that's a good so. point. Well, let's talk a little bit about, you mentioned Hypalon, and I know there's uh, some, some various materials that can go to make up this fabric. Can you give us a little oversight in terms of what the different choices are so as people look at ribs, they can understand more clearly what sort of life expectancy and characteristics they might get out of the different materials that could go up to make that? Sure. Well, as you said, we use Hypalon, and I'll get back to that in a moment. But there yes. are three kinds of fabric out there when you're looking at a rigid inflatable boat. Okay. Uh, the first one is a PVC material. All right. Uh, it's it's known. It's it's a economical fabric. Yeah. So it's relatively easy to work with from a manufacturing standpoint. But the challenge is, in order for it to be able to be supple yes. to work with, yes. they have to add a polymer or a gas to it. And what happens is, over time in the sun, it becomes the the gas lets off. Yep. And it starts to break down. Okay. So it's a very short term type of product. You All tend right. to see it a lot in dinghies. Okay. Uh, people hear a lot about kind of a sticky tube on a dinghy. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's right. exactly what that's from. Okay. That fabric or that gas is releasing and it's breaking down. Yes. So there's PVC. Okay. Then there is a material called polyurethane. Mm -hmm. And polyurethane is a very, very strong material. Um, and you see it used a lot by the Navy. The downside with oh, yeah. the material is it doesn't have a long life. Oh. So it's very susceptible to UV degradation. Oh, okay. So though it's strong for the first five years or so, it starts to break down very quickly in UV light, and then you have issues with having to replace it down the road. Oh, all right. What we use is Hypalon. Yeah. And this is the material that's it's, it's, um, the one recognized most by the industry and in the commercial markets. It's known for its longevity. Hypalon yeah. can last up to 30 years. Wow. Uh, it also has the best overall strength for a long term. Uh, polyurethane may be a little stronger the first couple of years, yeah. but then once you hit that five year mark, yes. Hypalon far yeah. outweighs it, and it's much more UV stable. Wow, wow, that's very, very, very helpful education on that. I didn't sure. know of all that. Well, let's uh, move from this is the basic area. Let's move next to uh, this process of cutting and actually making the tubes. That sounds great.